You seem to really perform well live. You do a lot of energy. Oh, yeah, we're terrific. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. <laughs> I am Frank Zappa, as imagined by the editor of a famous rock and roll magazine. I am an anachronism who makes the ugliest music on the planet. I have no right to call myself a member of the human race. I am tasteless, untalented, pompous, arrogant, cruel, insensitive, vulgar, and not a fun guy because I don't use drugs. <laughs> Well, to me, a cigarette is food. So, <laughs> now, that may be a baffling concept for people in San Francisco who, who have this theory that they will live forever if they stamp out uh, tobacco smoke. I find this a little bit difficult to deal with, but I live my life eating these things and drinking this black water in this cup here, okay? You, by your fans or by the public, they don't know how to take you. Either a genius, thought of by some people, or someone who's a little bit uh, risque, how would you prefer? Well, I mean, you? what's wrong with being risque, you know? Nothing. I think that what I do is wonderful, and it doesn't hurt anybody, and uh, people like to have uh, a good time, and we're here to entertain them, so what's the difference? Does humor belong in music? I think so. It belongs in everyday life, unless uh, the Republicans want to take it away. Republicans, when they go into our office, <clears throat> because it takes a certain amount of pressure to force a person to be become a Republican in the yeah. first place. We have to feel a little sorry That's for That's true. We do. And it's a lot of terrible pressure that makes people become Democrats, too. But when they get under this pressure, it explodes and their raincoat pops up. <laughs> the first thing you do is you, when, whenever Ronald Reagan is speaking on television, turn it on and turn the sound down and put your child in front of the set and point to him and say, if he asks you to get into a car offers you candy, or tells you to go to fight in Nicaragua, tell him no. You've done a lot of video things, but have you done any real commercial type MTV videos? We did like one about, uh, hey, hi, who, hi, <laughs> rustic setting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did one uh, in 1980 for a song called You Are What You Is, yeah. and uh, it didn't get played very much because I had a guy who looked like Ronald Reagan getting the electric chair. And some people thought that was dangerous. <laughs> Pan over. <laughs> One more time. One more time. <laughs> Stamp your foot four times. <laughs> Titties and beer. I get the Titties picture. Beer. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, oh, that's going on right away. <laughs> oh, shit. Is that where the Barry Manilow concerts? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's um, usually too, they, there's too much drugs at the Barry Manilow show. Yeah, they can't about, you quite get this yeah, one. <laughs> You're anti, speaking about drugs, you have spoken out against them. Yeah. That's, that's sort of not the norm for musicians. That's usually. another reason why I don't get my music on the radio, because I'm totally out of step with reality. You know, I'm not a religious fanatic. I don't use drugs. And I'm neither a Republican or a Democrat. And uh, I'm reasonably sane. A young lady has uh, felt that um, I, my treatment of women in my lyrics and social comments has not been particularly positive. And uh, there's no reason why it should be. You should take your lumps along with everybody else because women do stupid fucking things just like the guys do. And if I say guys are stupid and a woman does something stupid, don't be a wimp about it. Just because you've got that thing between your legs, there's no problem. This is a personal thing. I think that if you wanted to make top ten hits and sell millions of records, you could. And yeah, you choose but who not wants to, to go through life with a tiny nose and one glove on? <laughs>